So welcome to the next uh, Foss North episode. Uh, today we, we have Kim from uh, from the city of Gothenburg with us. Uh, so Kim, maybe you want to introduce yourself a bit? Sure. Thank you for having me. Uh, I work for the city of Gothenburg at a department called the Consument of Medborg Service. It's customers and, and citizens, basically. And the focus of our place is to be uh, the forefront of what the citizens in the city will meet when they want a service provided or if they want to complain or if they want to participate in something. So the areas that we have are all from anything basically from the birth to, to the grave. Th those are the services that a city provides. So anything within that area, we should try to help you find or, or exemplify or inform or help you participate within that area. And what I do there is mostly trying to digitize those kinds of analog services to something new and useful that is in the digital domain, whether it's releasing open data or information or, or helping some of the entities build e-services or you know any kind of digital service that you could want to use when you engage with a city or, or, or company within the city. So it's a very broad uh, palette of, of things that I do. The digital city. Yeah, you, you spoke in a, in a physical Force North event a couple of years back, and, and then the mm -hmm. focus was open data. So, so maybe we should start there. Um, sure. I, I know that you have an API to find free parking lots, but I bet there's a lot more between the, the birth mm -hmm. and so to speak. No, but this, the, this, the open data that the city has provided, it, it's not vast, it's not a lot, but there is a lot of data. But if you want to find that data, you just go to gothenburg.se slash PSI data. That's our website. And everything that we publish there will go directly to the national database and then the, the European database. So you can find all our open data there. Most of what we release is, like I said, it's hard information like traffic, parking places, maps of the city and stuff like that. It's not a lot of uh, human-centered data, but that's coming. You know, it's, it's hard to navigate how to release data that is more human-specific when you have GDPR, for instance, that is very complicated and, and a narrow road to, to follow. But, but the data that, like you mentioned, the API for parking spaces, it, it, it's been there a while. And why it's been there a while is because of the companies that within the city operate in some way that uses parking spaces. So they asked the city a couple of years back, how can we get this information? Because we want to create a service. We want to create a service of parking so you can find the parking space and pay your parking ticket and so on. And Jonas, who, who works at the parking uh, company that we have in the city, he has only a small percentage of that data. Most of the other companies that uh, supply you with parking spaces as a service, they don't share that data with us. They just collect our data to put it in their applications. And that's a thing, an area that I want to change for the city and that I'm working in, uh, in different forms because I want the data that we have in this city, all of it to be released in some way. And if you think of it, 90% of the data within the city is Alman handling. It's open for the public, basically. But it's stuffed in containers that are old and legacy systems, and it's not structured well, and so on. And, and a lot of people who work for the city don't think of their information as data. So, so that mindset has to be changed for for those opportunities to be available. That's a thing that we're working on a lot right now. But there is data storage, there is data that is open for public, and there is data that is being used by citizens and universities and, and different forums. But it's 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 not a lot, but it's it, it's out, out there and it's open for everybody. But so I, I suppose that uh, most of this data that is uh, available to the public, as in as in the Almin Almen handling uh, uh, use case, is kind of static data, something that has uh, um, been received by the city. And and is the, is the, are there a lot of examples of data that is dynamic that changes? 
I suppose the parking data could have, for example, the number of free spaces. Mm -hmm. But are there other such examples? Yeah, if you're looking into um, the traffic situation, there's there's traffic data that is, uh, let's say, online. Most of the data that we have in the city is statistical data, and it, it's structured in maybe an Excel file or, or something like that, because that's how it was collected, and that's how the, the, the participants within each area use them. I use a lot of spreadsheets to, to, to collect my data and do stuff with it. So that's just because our working method is that. But if you're looking for online data, IoT data, then most parts of those are either environmental data or traffic data, because that's where we use it ourselves uh, as online data. So uh, it, it's, it's an ongoing process in finding what is the most suitable way to collect this kind of information. And for a city that has a very strict budget in every silo that it has, it's really hard to not to count a person as a collector, but to count a device as a collector and, and you know balance, where shall I have that person be working in or where shall I have a machine to be working? And I think that's a that's a paradigm problem that we all have. It doesn't matter which company we are in. The same thing when I talk to Ericsson about their stuff and how they're collecting. Well, in some cases, there is a person collecting that information because that's how they've been working for 58 years or something like that. And to transition from you as a person to collecting that, to transition into an IoT device, there's there's a lot of issues that needs to be attended to. Not only the person that is uh, working or um, ha has a, a salary coming in from that, that that's a long discussion. But also the 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 what shall we collect this for, is a parameter that is very much in need of discussion and and it is not. Uh, it's the same with any company that I talk to. Why are we collecting this? Well, because of this. Okay, what? is it for, was it good for, for us, but what is it good for the other departments within our consortium or, or, or place that we work in? You don't think of that. You think of your data as what I need right now and how I'm supposed to use it, and then you store it at some file and then you move on because that is that is our mindset and, and that is the problem if you're looking into anything that's remotely as AI driven or IoT driven or singularity driven. Yeah, you you have to be very mindful of that. I'm 47 years old now, and my job is to help you think of creative ideas to use the vast number of information and data that we have, so that I can help you create a better service for the next generation to come. I am one of those people from 55,000 employees in the city, and there's not a lot of us thinking this way because we're not used to it. And we're not trained to think like this. That's why data is such a, you know, it, it's such a far-fetched idea to be working. And, and this is why you see very little open data within Sweden and other countries as well. Yeah. When it comes to the data that you shared, I, I browsed around real quick before this interview, and mm -hmm. I saw that some of it is released under CC0. So it's the basic That's correct. domain. Do, is that the only license, or do you use... Multiple. I try to get the entities within our city to release everything as CC0 because it is public domain. Why should you be entangled in anything that's harder to understand than you are welcome to use it? That That's our primary motto. In some cases, I think it's really important to say that this data is being collected by Gothenburg City so that you will know that it is quality stamped and it is approved from the city, but not in every case. And, and then I you don't think uh, CC sorry? by or uh, yeah, exactly. CC with... by. Yeah, and because you... I, I I don't want anything to be constricted in the way of working or using it, because when you put constrictions on anything, that's where the problem starts. Every time you program something, every time you try to innovate something, when there's a restriction 
of your mind, that's when you fail most of the times. And okay. everybody has those restrictions. Okay. Can I challenge you there, Ray, you, just for fun sake? So, so earlier you, you said that you uh, you had a problem that you share your parking uh, data but don't get anything back. Would mm -hmm. it be? Uh, do you think you would solve that problem by having like a strong copyleft license for your data so that they have to reshare, or would that just mean that no. nobody shares? It would mean that the person working within whatever company that has traffic and parking, they would go into some other forum to find that information and then use it. That's how we are. I find loopholes in everything I do every day of my life. And you do that too. So when I meet that person who is very much narrow-minded or restricted, I move around that person. I find somebody else to talk to. And that's how we are that kind of people. So. If I'm a company living off parking things, I need to find all the information for free so I can create a service to make money on, and then I need to expand from that. Sharing is not the first thing in my mind because I don't see the potential from that because I've never been taught that. So I don't, I don't blame the companies. It's just that they have to see their part in this uh, community more in a seven-dimensional form instead of a two-dimensional form. And that's hard. Yeah. I'm happy to see that you like abandoned the old license that Gothenburg started out with, where there were restrictions on what you could do with the data. Mm -hmm. One of them was um, you could not write anything bad about Gothenburg. Yeah. But, but, but that's... This that, is that is a, yeah, 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 of course, because... We're trying to be an open and a sustainable city for everyone. And that is a, a, a huge task to, to, to be burdened with. But it's amazing in so many ways because then you can really open up to discussions like this and say, where am I doing something wrong? Please tell me. Because if you don't tell me what I'm doing wrong, I will never be able to fix that. And that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case with Gua Gubbar. <laughs> or in some cases it was because when you sat next to them on the tram they told you stories about everything they were really open and inviting and very fun to listen to and sometimes very obnoxious because they had issues and they had problems with you because you were youth or whatever but they had a point let's talk about this and you can say whatever you want and I can extract information I need from that and that's how a civil servant should be open to engage, open to talk in whatever issue and do not take it personally because it's not meant to be. My job is to serve you guys in any way I can because I am a civil servant. And if you do the same for me, I'll do the same for you. I think it was unfair because the um, open data thing was like, one of the agencies or uh, yeah, offices in Gothenburg, traffic control, yeah, they just got it on their plate and I don't think they wanted it. But anyhow, but there are no paywalls or registrations on the data now? No, there shouldn't be. The, the, the only walls that could be in some data services that we provide is that you have to register just so we know how to reach you when we fuck up because that's going to happen. <laughs> Servers are going to get down and so on. So in some cases, the entities that are the data providers, they want to give you some kind of security and saying, hey, we'll tell you if we're changing anything or if anything fucks up. But mostly it's just open to, to download. Do, do you also do, I, I know I've, I've been incorporating best traffic's open data, so, so mm -hmm. public transport, and they, they have APIs, keys for rate limiting and so on, just to make it safe. Yeah. Uh, exactly, and I mean that's that's not a restriction, but sort of a technical measure to to avoid DDoS attacks and stuff. That's exactly what some of the entities want to to uphold to, and I can understand that because it if if something breaks down, that's a lot of money to spend to to fix something really simple. So in some cases, you need to do that. But what I try to do in the work that we do in the the region of. of uh, where we live, Best Rayota Las Regiona, because we just started last year. We started a, a venture together of being the most open region in Sweden, because there are 49 communes in, in, in this region that need to 
release data to share information. But it's hard because they're we're huge and there's some of them are tiny. So we need to help each other to to get to that. So, for instance, that the parking spaces that we provide are all shared through one API so that it's easier to create the service. That's where I want to get to. Now, now you've answered my next questions. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, a lot of your work is in standardization because you spoke of this collaboration within the region, but you also spoke about aggregating data through sort of a, a statewide system up until an EU-wide system. <laughs> Is there a lot of standardization going on there and or, or how, how structured yeah. is the data? I, it's hard to say from every data that is being shared how structured it was before, but, but in our project and in our work, we, we look upon to what the EU has given us in, in, in structures and in standards and try to uphold those because we as data providers, we also have an obligation to provide certain services. Information in the lowest case, for instance, we need to have that structure so that everybody can find it and easily access it and so on. And the same thing I want to do with, let's say, parking information as well. There are standardized um, data sets and, uh, and projects and ideas that has been taken up from other countries and EU is supporting them. We should be obligated to use those and we do because we want things to be done properly and easily maintained. So if every European city shares their same parking or, or like I always talk about cycle data, bicycle data, roads, parking spaces, uh, pumping stations, services to provide a bike wherever you are. I want that service to be available for me in any city I go to within Europe. And I want to use my own freaking app. I don't want to download the other app for any city. And that is a problem for us today because everybody's doing their own thing and keeping their own egos attached to anything that they do. I want that data to the lowest Government at least to be structured the same way and at least be released the same way so that everybody can use a service that is holistic in, in the whole of Europe. It's a huge task to undertake, but it's a must because just a simple service as riding your bike from this state to the other is easy physically, but impossible digitally, which to me is insane. But that's just because people don't understand that structured data is something that we need to have in order to create better services for everybody. Yeah, and, 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 that's the challenge when going from spreadsheets to, uh, exactly. to data, data because then it needs to be structured for this generic yeah. use case. Yeah, so that's a lot of our job is to talk about metadata and talk about structured data and talk about how to apply those standards that already been taken and thought up by fantastic people all around the world. I mean, we would not be talking like this if HTML was not structured. It would be total chaos and we'd be calling each other and, and, and really messing this up. Yeah, Just so simple things, people don't understand that. Phone calls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All <laughs> digits, phone call. So, so, I mean, one of the questions I have around the data is that do, do you see a lot of mashups with your data? I mean, do, do you find a lot of it incorporated into things like OpenStreetMap and things like that? Or where, where does it go primarily these days? Do you even keep track of it? Do no, I don't keep track. Of it. I would like to keep track of it. But since it's CCO, I have no right to ask you what you're going to use the data for. And I am a citizen. Civil, civil servant and Alman handling is stated by law that I am not allowed to ask you. If you ask me, I want this data, Kim, fix it. I'll have to provide it to you, but I can't ask what you're going to use it for. And that's the principle I try to work with in open data. It's not, you know, it's not equal Alman handling and open data, but it's very similar. And I want to keep it that flow. So when you want to create something, I want to provide it for you because I'll know you'll better the information that I have in the steps you will take. And my hope is that people come back to me and say, hey, I used your data to, to make this for the betterment of whatever, 
or to create my venture capital company that makes gazillions of dollars. That's fine too, but I want to have that interaction so that we can talk about how I can provide you with better, more quality stuff. Has, has there been a lot of people that come back and tell you what they have done? Mostly journalists, because those are the ones that are interested in the data that I've been sharing, which is um, economic data of the transactions that we have in the city, what, what um, invoices we pay and to whom and so on. That's a very interesting data set that, that I've been working on for quite some time now and talking about a lot because the transparency of a city is very shallow in, in a lot of cases. For Gothenburg, it is not. It used to be. We got a lot of uh, discussions of Mutebori, you know, the most corrupt city, blah, 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 which it might have been, but not in all cases. In most cases, people were doing their best to provide the correct information and not to fuck up. But since this data set came out, it's transparent. You can see from month to month who sent us an invoice and who paid it and how much it was. That's a key feature for a city to have to be transparent. Where is my money going? And that is open and it's out there. And a lot of journalists thanks the city for that because it made them a lot of more easier to work with. And I want to have that discussion with those journalists because I know that they have other questions that they want to address and, and help me clarify or help me work within the quality domain that we need to do. So I, I'm very up for, for talking to anybody who wants to talk about what they provided or how they used or how they complain about the, the shit that we released because that's important too. Do you do you have any experience or any like stories to tell us about resistance from from uh, colleagues? There's a lot of uh, um, there's a lot. I would say um, yeah, they're they're frightened in, in some senses. The, the people who own the data or the people who collect the data are are frightened in the aspect of what if I did something wrong. And that's a human uh, trait that we all have. But it's hard to say it to me or to say it to your boss. I am afraid that the quality of my work might not add up to the highest standard that I have. I know I meet the barriers of what I'm supposed to do. But what if? And what if the what if? Those are the, the most common discussions that we end up to when we talk about not releasing data or being unsure about releasing data or using data for instance i mean that, that's I think, a I don't think that's lot anything. like argumentation around releasing source code i'd say it's exactly it is, it's yeah <laughs> we're afraid to sort of show how we actually did it yeah, yeah I, I had to add a disclaimer in one of my python scripts today that um I know that this is not uh, the way to do it, but I will rewrite it. I, I don't know Python enough. So th there's always the, uh, you know, you're, you're a bit afraid of, of showing that you're, you, you don't know it enough. Yeah, but that's the thing. And I think we should embrace it. I know a lot of stuff, but I am stupid in so many ways. Embrace that, that you are. So you can learn, but it's really hard to say that as an official person when you're supposed to be releasing the information vault of thousands of people's labor of love. Uh, all of a sudden you get the fever of holy crap. When this gets out, how are they gonna react? Am I the one they're gonna shoot and fire? And that's where all the anxiety starts within any trait that you have working with data or programming yeah but i guess what once it's out it would it would, could work similarly to how open source software projects work that oh mm -hmm. i got this data and it it looks weird or there's something wrong here and then you can point that out i mean even if, it, even if it can be embarrassing for whoever released the data it's it's an opportunity to make things better Exactly, and that's what I want to happen, and that's why I'm very upfront in in the way I talk and work. I I, I know I make a lot of stupid statements and say wrong things, and I trample on a lot of feet, because I am out there. 
I'm putting myself out there and I'm trying to make a change. I'm going to be wrong so many times, but that's fine because I know you will be there to correct me. Hey, you fucked up over here. You see, there's two commas. It shouldn't be that in this programming. It should take that. You shouldn't use it at all in this programming language. But but at least you're giving me the benefit of doubt and you're helping me to make things better. And that's all I can hope for. Otherwise, um, I would never release anything. But I'll have to find a, a working method for you to feel comfortable in your skin and your work. And that is to, okay, let's follow these standards. Let's follow this coloring. Let's follow these protocols so that when we release, we at least feel comfortable enough to not shake in our pants. And you can't do that by following simple steps, five finger processing and standardized coding because there's so many people that have helped us before. Let's honor and respect those. That's the end of the first half of our uh, interview with Kim from Gothenburg. Um, and this is also our last episode before Christmas. So um, happy holidays to everyone. Um, always like and subscribe. You can find the pod on YouTube or ConfTube, but also as an ordinary podcast via RSS from post-north.se slash pod. So see you around and happy holidays. Thanks for listening.